Hi guys, good morning. Welcome back to the new video. So, oh god. This question right here is a perfect example of how at random why such can be applied out of nowhere. For sure, if you don't know how it's going to be applied, it will actually go on from very scratch and suddenly you will see, oh, while optimizing, something different is going to be applied. That is, we will go very, 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 very deeply, but from scratch. Cool. Let's quickly jump on the question itself. I'll explain. I'll not read the question because the question is pretty standard hectic. Um, snapshot array. Let's quickly jump on what we have to do. So it just says that we have four functions. One is snapshot array where we will just initialize the array itself. Uh, void as a set, which means I have, if I have the array initialized, I have to set the index by this particular value at this snapshot time. Okay, what's the snapshot at that moment? Snap will actually increase the snapshot ID. Cool. It increases the snapshot ID, right? And lastly is the get operation, which means at that index, at that snapshot ID, what could have been the value? Cool. So for an array associated, I have a value at each index and also a snapshot ID. Cool. Let's quickly jump on to a perfect example. I made example by myself to actually explain entirely deeply. Firstly, I call the snapshot array, which will actually initialize my snapshot with a size of five, which means an array is initialized with a size of five. And initially my snapshot ID is a zero. Cool. As I call function set, it means at the index one, please set the value as three. Snapshot ID is still remain same. At the index one, I set the value as three. Cool. Now, at index two, set the value as five. Snapshot ID is still same. At index two, I set the value as five. At index four, I set the value as two. Snapshot ID is still same. Snap at index 4, I set the value as 2. Cool. Now I call a snap function which will actually increase the snapshot ID. Now snapshot ID is increased and it has now become 1. Earlier it was a 0. Cool. No worries. Again, I call a function as a set. At index 2, please set the value as 7. At index 2, I set the value as 7. Cool. Now the array looks something like this at snapshot 1. Again, I call, let's say, a snap function, which will again increase the snapshot ID. Now, the snapshot ID has become 2. Again, I call a function as set at index 2. Please put the value as 9. It goes and put the value as 9. For snapshot ID 2, we add something like this. Cool, cool, cool. Now, what is going to happen? I go and ask you a get operation. Get is nothing but at index. And at that snapshot ID, please give me what was the value at that index. At snapshot 0, at index 2, what was the value? So I have to go back and see at snapshot 0, what was the value at index 2? It was a 5. So I will go at the snapshot 0. I will get the snapshot 0 snapshot, just a snap, and look at okay. At snapshot 0, index 2 was having a value 5. So the answer is 5. For a snapshot 2, index at value 1, index at 1. Okay, let's go to snapshot 2. Snapshot 2 is right here the index the value at index one is nothing but three so i just grab the snapshot two the value at the index one is actually a three so answer is three at snapshot one value at the index two i quickly go and see okay what is the snapshot one snapshot one the value at the index at the index at the index two it is nothing but a seven so i'll quickly go and grab okay what is the snapshot at the snapshot one grab that snapshot of array and then from that quickly go and see okay what is at the index 2 it is nothing but 7 so one thing for sure we know we can actually implement something like this so can we do something like this which means at every get call i will just grab the snapshot of that array okay at that snapshot what the array looked like and with that maybe i can find the answer firstly is it even possible to keep the snapshot, which means to keep the snapshot at every point of time, which means for the snapshot 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on and so forth. Can we, is it, is it actually possible to keep the snapshot of the entire array? Firstly, it is possible. Let's look at the constraints. What I am saying is, 
I will keep the snapshot at every snapshot ID, which means of the entire array itself. Snapshot can be called five into one e four times. So which means five into one e four times it can be called. And for every snapshot, I will have a snapshot of the array itself. Array of length five into one e four. So for every snapshot, I have to store the array, which means for every snapshot, I have to store the array of size 5 into 1 e 4. And that snapshot calls can be called 5 into 1 e 4 times itself. So 5 into 1 e 4, 5 into 1 e 4. Is it that something it can be made? It will become 10 into 1 e 8, which is 1 e 9 itself. No, this much space I can't use. For sure, I can't go go by this way that okay I will grab every snapshot the snapshot of the entire array at every snapshot I can't do that sorry let's think of something different how we have to optimize it right let's quickly go back and see what we actually need we need at that index at that snapshot id what was the value I'm not concerned about the entire array itself I'm only concerned about okay that index and for that index and that snapshot id what was the value so i'm concerned about the index and the snapshot id at that index so how about we only store the snapshot id value at that index itself because i'm only concerned about the index and the snapshot id so only operate on index and only store the snapshot id it is what the question was saying i did nothing else I'm only storing for that index what is the snapshot ID and for snapshot ID I need a value so I will say for that index at that snapshot ID what is the value that is it how let's see quickly moving back to the original case what we saw earlier was I initialize my array cool array is again initialized no worries I call a function as a set we know right now the snapshot ID is zero right at index 1, I have to put the value as 3. I said earlier, I am only concerned about the index and the snapshot ID. So at this index 1, for the snapshot ID 0, my value is 3. So just put the same thing. For this index 1, my snapshot ID is 0, my index, my value is 3. As simple as that. For this index 1, I am only placing the snapshot ID and the value. That is it. For this index 2, snapshot ID is again a 0, value is 5. For this index 2, snapshot ID is 0, value is 5. For this index 4, snapshot ID is 0, value is 2. For this 4, snapshot ID is 0, index uh, value is 2. As simple as that. You saw what happened. I was actually making the entire array earlier. For every, for every snapshot, for every this call, or for every snapshot calls, which means for every snapshot, I was having the entire array. But now, for every set call, I'm just placing one element, just one element for every call for a set. And we know that this call, it can go at max 1 e 5 times, 5 into 1 e 4 times. That is the reason, okay, these, these chochotu chochotu cho pairs can at max come 5 into 1 e 4 times. That is seeming to be a good thing. Let's see how it will again go. If I have snap call, then snapshot ID is increased. Cool. Now I call a function as set, but now I know the snapshot ID is one. So at index two for snapshot ID one, please place a number as seven. For at index two snapshot ID as one, I place a number seven. Hmm. Again, call the snap function snapshot ID increased to two. For index 2, at snapshot id 2, please place the number 9. For index 2, at snapshot id 2, please place the number 9. Thus, as this snap, as this call, as this set call is being done, these small, small pairs will get added. And this calls, it can go up to 5 into 1 e 4 times. So these small, small pairs, it will actually go up at max 1 e 5 into 1 e 4 times. Now comes the interesting part. Let's say if I call the get function. For that, I need to go at the index. I can easily go at the index. Cool, no worries. I also want to go at the snap ID. Cool. I have the snap ID itself. I can go to the snap ID also. Let's see the example. At the index 2, at the index 2, at snap ID 0, at snap ID 0, what is the value? Value is 5. Mm -hmm. At index 0, at index 0, what 
at index 2 at snapshot id 0 what is the value it's 5 at index 1 at index 1 snapshot id as 2 snapshot id as 2 what is the value um aryan there is no value cool no worries no worries at all you can see that okay if snapshot 2 has no value which means 0 1 2 it had been same it was never changed because i'm only placing the value okay for snapshot when it when it was being changed i place a 2 for this okay it was being changed but not now i don't want to place it so here the 2 was not present i can simply grab okay whatsoever is at the top that is my answer for snapshot 2 at index 0 sorry for snap for index 1 at at snapshot 2 I will just grab the same value that of snapshot 0 because the value never changed and thus it is same as 3 so you can see the answer is actually a 3 that is the reason that is the reason I will quickly go and check in my actual this particular map array anything you want to say and then say for this particular snapshot oh if this is present just give me the value if not then okay what is the like just, just, just next value which is present just give me that for index 2 at snapshot 1 for index 2 for index 2 at snapshot 1 the value is 7 just return the answer as 7 now you know very exactly one thing that okay at index you will just move move to that index i will say okay for that snapshot id for that snapshot id you will go and search for that snapshot id in this list of ids because it's nothing but snapshot id to the value it's nothing but the list of snapshot id to the values so for that index you will quickly go and find okay this in this list of snapshot id values what is the actual snapshot id cool this snapshot id is here now this snapshot id is here if i say okay let's give me the snapshot id as 2 you will quickly go and search for 2 now remember this fact you are quickly going and searching for what searching for 2 searching for 2 it may high it might have happened that snapshot id have increased let's say to 5 and now the value have occurred as let's say 8 if i say okay at index at index 1 at index 1 the snapshot id as 4 what would have been the value so you could have gone and searched for 4 in this not found cool but then last occurred was actually 3 so you are quickly going and searching for 4 but you could not found 4 so you went and say okay the value is actually a 3 because it is just next value which is coming up so for sure my task will be to go and search for snapshot id in this particular list of ids of snapshot ids and if found just return the value if not then return the next smaller value so now comes for sure if we want to search for snapshot id and we know the ids are always sorted because the ids are always increasing so for sure binary search it can be applied but as soon as we think of binary search shall we apply a lower bound or upper bound what shall we do if i just say you you can apply both but it's just that how you solve it if you apply a lower bound which which means if i just ask you hey um what is the value at snapshot id as zero then you will say okay at snapshot id is zero the value is three but then if i again ask you what's a value at snapshot id at two then you will go and find two you will let you will not found it then you will go and find two you will no, not find it you will not found it um, and then you will just say okay it's not present so i will just quickly go and jump to the next smaller value so one time you are able to find it one time you are not so you have to go to the next smaller value while if you use an upper bound you will just go on to the upper bound of zero which will actually point above zero and then you will simply go back also which means one step back you will go it minus minus if you have to call for two still you would have landed above zero then again you would have to do a back then again you would have landed back to a zero so for sure by using this upper bound you don't have to add an if condition although you can use both lower bound and upper bound both will work but just for upper bound you can easily just say okay please point me to the snapshot id as whatsoever it, it is required and then i will just do a minus minus to reach to the actual value which can be possible maybe it is present it will actually land me there if it is not then it will land me to the next smaller value 
That is how I can simply apply my binary search on this list of snapshot into values and figure out my answer. Let's quickly jump on the code. It's very, 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 very easy. Exactly what we saw. We'll just make the exactly same thing. As I showed you initially that for this entire length of my array, I need to make a kind of a map, which means for snapshot ID to value. So initially it is uh, for a snapshot is zero as we started from the snapshot as zero. So you saw it is having value zero, 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 zero. So I will just place the same stuff at my, I, it's just a map, right? It's just a map of map. Although, although for sure you can choose an unordered map here, but here the map will be chosen. I will show you why, but here you will see, okay, an unordered map can be easily chosen. Now, as you will choose an unordered map for this particular index, you will see that a map is defined. This map is nothing but of snapshot ID to actually value. And that's the reason it's a map and not an unordered map. You cannot use an unordered map because later you're going to apply binary search on this particular this particular map itself. And binary search application can only be applicable when the array, when the, when the data structure is sorted. So to apply binary search on this, you have to choose this as a map and not as an unordered map. While for this particular index, if it is a map, this index, it is a map. So you can choose an unordered map here. Unordered map can be ch chosen here, but here it will always be chosen as a map because it is actually a data structure on which binary search is going to be applied. Cool. By that, I just simply make my unordered, my my map initially by just saying for every snap index, I will have a map and that map will have a for snap zero, the value is zero initially. Now, as soon as I call the function as set, I know for that index, for that index, I need to put in the value for that particular snapshot ID. Snapshot ID, I have marked as global so that I can use that snapshot ID again and again. So for that index, let's say the index is one and let's say the snapshot ID have increased to one. So for that, index one snapshot id has increased to one i will place in the value as one right if the snap is called simply the snapshot id is increased that's it now when the get function is called i'll quickly go and see okay what is the snap of index it will just point me to this particular map entirely it will just point me to the, to the map entirely in that particular map i will go and find the upper bound of my snap id okay the upper bound of my snap id is found if it is the snap ID I was looking for, I will go and quickly find, okay, let's say I was looking for snap ID as a three. So it will quickly go and find, let's say snap ID as one. Cool. It will quickly go and find the upper bound of one, which will point to a two. And then I do a IT minus minus, which will actually start pointing this to a one itself ultimately. Thus, I will just return, okay, this pointer, which is IT, it is pointing to one comma seven. The value is nothing but seven. And that is, I can simply return the value, which is seven, right? If it would have been saying, okay, let's say snap ID would have been three. So it will have go and point to us upper bound of three, which is nothing but upper bound of three. Now for sure, IT minus minus, then it will just point back to a two comma nine and we'll just return. Okay. Snap ID is two and the value is actually a nine. So I will just return a nine. That says I'm using upper bound so that I don't have to add if else condition. Okay, if it is end, please go back. If it is actually that number, so please get, please get that. So that is how you can easily get to know by using simply upper bound that what is actually the value at that index and at that snapshot ID. I hope that you guys got the proper intuition from start to scratch how we actually moved on to every step. Okay, we have to optimize it. Please make an array. We only want index to actually snapshot ID. Cool. At index, please only show the snapshot IDs. At snapshot ID, we saw, okay, it is actually sorted in, in the increasing order because it's always increasing. So please do a bind search there. That is how we actually build the intuition. Cool. I hope that you guys like it. See you on the video. Take care.